This Airsoft GI TV episode is brought to you in part by G&G Armament, Echo One USA, and TSD Airsoft. How's it going Airsoft GI TV? My name is Tam and I'm going to do another Tactical Gearheads episode because I've made a couple of changes and additions since the last Tactical Gearheads that I was featured in. This is the rig that you will see me play in the latest CQB video Attack City that we filmed and I've changed a lot of things on it based off of Aaron's Tactical Gearheads episode that we filmed. I realized how much of a minimalist he was and how much extra crap that I was wearing. So I decided to ixnay the plate carrier and go with this chest rig setup. Now before I go any further, I know that I'm not wearing this properly and I did that on purpose. It's a chest rig, it's supposed to be around my chest. I prefer it to sag a little lower. I did that on purpose, but that's why that these shoulder straps look a little funny. This is an HSS chest rig, and it's kind of a bare bones chest rig because it only carries magazines. It does have molly space on it, which come in really handy. But the only cargo that it carries are magazines. They're made for M4s or M16s, but anything that has these type of dimensions or something similar to that will fit inside this rig. I wore this thing to lion claws so that I could ventilate. I didn't want a big heavy plate carry on me while I was running around in the desert. But at lion claws, I had a bunch of extra magazine pouches attached to this molly. So the molly on the front of this chest rig comes in really handy. But for CQB, I didn't need any of that. I'm even carrying more magazines than I really need to. The pull tabs on here are Velcro and buttons so that it keeps the magazine secure. I have these closed because I don't use them. These ones are open for these three magazines front and center because those are the ones that I would use during fast-paced CQB play. Right here is my dump pouch. It's attached to my belt. This is a Condor Riggers belt. The Riggers belt is a really handy tool. It provides a really stiff and stable chassis to mount stuff like a dump pouch or a holster right here. It works much better than your average wet belt. And definitely better than some of those leather dress belts that I've seen you guys wear out there. Speaking of holsters, this is an OE Tech fast draw holster. I like it, obviously because I can draw it very quickly. It has a lot of space for different types of guns, although I carry mostly 1911s or my high cap, but both of them fit well inside, and it has space for an extra magazine up top here. That was my secondary weapon. My primary is this gun right here, which you have seen in the last Tactical Gearheads episode, but I'm going to go over this a little bit further since everybody seems to be so curious about it. I've changed the stock setup on it. Previously, I had a what is that, like a 733 stock, a really old school M4 stock on here with a 9.6 nickel metal hydride battery attached to it. That nickel metal hydride battery weighs about 150 friggin pounds. So I swapped the stock out for a Classic Army CQB stock and I run an itty bitty little light poly battery in here and that has helped me save a lot of weight on this gun which comes in handy because that battery with this flashlight on here really weighed my gun down so I've really gotten a lot of extra mobility by taking that 9.6 nickel metal hydrate battery out of it. This gun started out as a Tokyomori SR16 which is a long M4 with a full stock. I've changed the front end out to the King Arms um, CQBR kit which came with this free float rail system, the flip up sight and the 10 inch shorter barrel. I put some sort of aggressive flashlight on here, I don't know what brand it is and I have a Sistema inner barrel inside of there. This is a Mad Bull Rasp Fix that I use to brace my uh, rail system with my body and also to raise my optics up a little bit. Although I never run optics when I play and I haven't for a long time because I've had this gun for so long. I basically shoot off of muscle memory and I use my flashlight to track my BBs. I have a mixture of black and white BBs. So every couple of rounds I'll see a white BB fly by and I know where I'm shooting at. This body is a GMP Special Forces body. Um, I've had a couple of different bodies on this thing, but that's what's on here now. Like I said, I have a Classic Army stock. Internally is a Sistema gearbox with Sistema hop-up and Sistema barrel. I probably have Sistema gears in here. I don't really know. I've changed the internals on this thing quite a bit, um, and I haven't really kept track of what's inside. But it works now, and that's all I really care about. I won't peek inside again until it breaks on me. That's pretty much my gear head to toe, oh, except for my protective gear. I need to mention my gloves. I got rid of the Oakley gloves because I've had those things for so long. They're basically disintegrating every time I wore them. And I picked up some Mechanics Impact 2 gloves, which work really well, and I know they do because I've shot myself in the hand point blank with a KWA M9 PTP. If you haven't seen that video, go look it up on GITV. It's kind of 
humorous, but these things have great protection on the outside of the hand, and that's what you really need for airsoft. They do have also a lot of padding on the inside, which is great for crawling around and stuff like that, even though I don't spend much time on my hands. I mainly have them for the protection on the outside of the knuckle, which is fantastic. Another thing that I've added to my gear are the hatch knee pads. These X-Tac knee pads are fantastic. I have never worn knee pads until a couple of weeks ago and I don't know why I waited so long to get them because these things provide great protection when kneeling down and you don't nail on BBs which is something I just kind of sucked up up until recently. These quick detaching um, straps make it really easy because I've only adjusted them once and they fit my leg every time. A lot of padding to keep my knee protected and obviously the hard surface allows me to slide around if I need to. That is pretty much my gear head to toe minus my face mask. When we get back from this commercial break, I'm going to show you guys how I rig the gun cameras for the CQB videos. This public service announcement is brought to you by Airsoft GI and Condor Outdoor. What's up, GI TV? This is just a quick reminder to always have fun when you're playing Airsoft, but be safe, use common sense, and always follow the law. Don't take your Airsoft guns out in public, especially not to school. You don't want to be the one that gets Airsoft banned for everybody now, do you? Alright, welcome back. Hopefully that first portion answered some of the questions you had about my gun. Now, hopefully I'll be able to answer some of the questions you have about the gun cameras. First of all, we do have helmet cams set up to attach to the strap of your face mask or goggles. That's how most of those images are captured. A lot of you were having questions about this setup though. This scar is not mine, it's just something I'm using to represent the camera setup that we had David rigged with during the first CQB video at Tag City. Now I have to clarify something, that was not me in that first video, that was my friend David. He was using my gun because he didn't have a gun, but I cannot take credit for the carnage that he wrecked on that place that day. But this is how his gun was set up. We ran two vertical grips, one was the one that he used to play with, which was attached to his flashlight, and the other one was used to rig the camera up. All right. um, there was really no way to attach this grip, which is basically a big C-clamp, onto the gun, so we ran two vertical grips, one in front of the one that he actually used, so that we could get a profile of the barrel and the BB shooting. I found, though, that this rig is not great for the audience, because you don't really have a frame of reference. With this setup, you can't see the gun in frame, so it's just a string of BBs flying all over the place, which is kind of cool but it's not as cool as seeing the gun in frame and that's one of the things that I really think made the video awesome to watch because it was just like a video game. The clamp used is this, like I said, little C-clamp. You adjust it and attach it to whatever you want through here and then you unscrew this piece right here and you can adjust how you want your camera set up. Another way that I found out how to rig the cameras really well to actually get the gun in frame is to use this little setup right here. This is a much smaller little tripod setup, same little jib, to adjust the camera around. From this point of view, you can see the front sight, at least a little bit, depending on how you rig the gun up. One of the downfalls is, though, that I found that you can't see very far, so if you're shooting someone really far away, they're not going to be in frame. This is really meant for really up close and personal CQB contact. And the downfall with this thing, though, is that you can't really use it outdoors. And the reason being is because you can't use optics at all. It kind of takes up this area, you know. This is not conducive to winning airsoft battles right here. But when you're playing CQB, and like I said, since I don't really shoot properly anyway, I have the gun up next to my face, and this allows me to capture the image that I want to for the video. So I would suggest, if you want to record some of your awesome CQB games, to use this setup. But if you want to record your outdoor games, Something like this might be better for you. The little tripod is called an Ultrapod, and it's kind of cool because it has this Velcro strap already built into it, so that's how I have it wrapped around my stock right there, and that's how it stays secure. If you're going to use the M4 setup, or this Ultrapod setup, I would strongly suggest using some additional adhesive. I just didn't have any that day. And actually, as long as you strap down the Velcro, it'll work well. I'm Tim from Airsoft GI, and this has been a unique and fun tactical gear heads.
Airsoft GITV is brought to you in part by Sistema, Madbull Airsoft, and JBU Airsoft.